Okay, I know a lot of you probably have a lot of questions. I don't really have answers. I kind of, I don't want to talk about it, all right? I want to focus in this video on the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom gameplay that we saw today. We saw 10 minutes of gameplay. I did also unbox the special edition Switch on my channel today. I uploaded it earlier today, so go watch that as well. I don't want to I don't want to upload twice in a day, but unfortunately, there's a lot of things to talk about and I am still freaking out over this gameplay. Look, we can stick them together. We created oh, a makeshift no hammer. Way! This is called Fuse. No way. You can stick objects. To okay, so it starts it looks it looks like we're back in back in Breath of the Wild initially. I mean, Link looks sick, long flowing hair, literally looking badass. You also have a mini map now. So like these are the things that's sticking out to me the most here. Um, I, 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 a mini map was a heavily requested feature. Oh, You're probably a mini wondering map. something. There is How a do mini you get map? to the Sky Islands when they're so high up? They added a mini map. This demo was the perfect like gameplay reveal. I hope they show nothing else because this showed just enough to really get me excited for the game, but without going overboard and revealing too many secrets or things that we just didn't need to know about pre-launch. Clearly they were trying to figure out what do we do here to expand on the world. We can't add too much into the world because that wouldn't really make sense. All of a sudden there's all these new structures. So we've gone to the sky and there's looks like there's multiple ways of getting up into the sky. To begin with, he has, shows off the new ability where something falls from the sky and you can rewind time. You can make an object recall back to where it was before. So of course, by standing on that object and making it recall time, you go up with it and now you're in the sky. They said it's one of the many ways that you can get up there. And I'm not surprised by that because later on we see ways you can build flying b b craft that i'm sure there's a ton of different ways to get up top oh rewind this power is known as recall which rewinds an object's movement so now up here we have a bunch of man-made structures we have enemies we have probably new puzzles and things to find and, ch and chests and I, I i we haven't seen a lot yet i have i don't think i've seen shrines in this game yet i'm not sure maybe some of these sky puzzle islands act as a shrine i don't know but then we get to see the first new enemy which to me looks like a, just a bunch of parts that is getting kind of like glued and stuck together by this ectoplasm thing so i think i think that's part of the story that something these constructs something comes to life some entity comes to life and gives life to all these other dormant creatures lying around Items still break. As expected, fighting with just a branch won't get us very far. Good. And then easily, the the wackiest, most wild new mechanic that we saw is gluing, attaching, fusing items and things together. So you can pick up just a basic tree branch stick and then glue it to a massive boulder. And it, you can even see it increases the attack of your stick on the screen and it becomes like a hammer, like a boulder stick. It's kind of weird how it, it'll it shrink these items down proportionately. Like the boulder isn't its full size because that would be kind of ridiculous. But it seems like within the world, you can attach anything to anything. If we take this long stick and fuse it with a pitchfork, <laughs> will it become even longer? <laughs> We can create a weapon oh with a much longer attack God. range. You can attach like mushrooms to the front of your shield so that when you get attacked, they explode and create like a dust cloud. I, I, oh, and then the arrows. And the arrows, you can attach anything from your inventory to the arrowheads. They attached a leaf. They showed attaching an ice element to make your own ice arrow, which is interesting. In the last game, we had ice arrows. Now you can craft your own on the fly. They also even showed like a ton of things highlighted in what you can attach to an arrow. And there was a hunk of steak. And this is crazy. You can freeze far away enemies. What if you put a steak Very on it? useful. What if you put a steak on it? In addition, I want steak arrows. The effects get really wacky. Like if you attach an eyeball from one of the bats, the cre the cre the cleese or whatever, it actually becomes a homing arrow. So the, the eyeball gives it homing arrow properties. I can only begin to imagine how fleshed out this is, how many little details, hidden secrets, 
We, I swear, people are still finding in Breath of the Wild to this day things that we didn't know you could do in the game. R wacky effects. If you did this, you can make this. I'm sure people will be finding wacky effects in this game for years to come. And I'm sure this is also where a lot of the time and energy and resources were spent making this game, is making everything interact with everything. What effects would that have? What would happen if you if you fuse this with that? Build a boat, build a boat, build a boat. I so, want to see how it works. We'll oh, you lift can up this log build anything. And attach it to a second log. Oh, you can build anything. And then we see the building mechanic. Link is literally attaching these logs with this weird glue in any way that he wants to make a shape that he wants to float a little boat. And then you can attach the propellers wherever you want. It looked like attaching more made it go faster. You can also make different kinds of rafts and driving vehicles and flying machines. So cool. It seems like a lot of it is backed by these fans, but it'd be interesting to see if there's any other like m mechanical elements that you can play around with and, and things that you can create. Maybe like a, a guardian laser. Like, what if you what if you killed a guardian, took its laser and stuck it to the front of your, your car? Could you then like hit it and like shoot a guardian laser? That would be really cool. If you're in a place with a ceiling, you can go through to the floor above you. That's really cool. And then the ascendability is wild. It, it see, they, they said it had some restrictions, but seemingly, as long as you're underneath something, you can zip up to the ceiling and pass through it. They not only did it with like a basic structure that was, wasn't even that thick, but they go into a cave here and they're able to zip up all the way through the top of the cave to get to the top. So now you don't have to climb up everything as long as you can get inside it. What I really, really, really love about Breath of the Wild, but also now this game is how Nintendo are trying to take the idea of having an open world sandbox and having you interact with that world. Because I don't even know how they come up with these ideas, but yeah, why can't you just climb over everything? That was the first game. Why can't you just zip up through some stuff as long as you see a ceiling? Why can't you attach weapons to other things? Or, you know, like it's, they're just trying to figure out how they can make the world as fun as possible. And I also feel like a lot of this came from how people experienced the first game. I don't know if Nintendo even realized they were creating the tools for people to mess around with to create floating platforms and structures. But they saw people doing that and decided to give you actual tools to do that. So you didn't have to figure it out for yourself. You have the tools. It's just how creative can you be with them now? Uh, and then when you fall down, you just fall down and you're back on the surface world. It's all seamless. There's no loading screens. I know these games aren't the most graphically intense, but I'm so surprised on the Switch it's handling this processing of being able to zip up to the sky and just leave the world and have it all stay rendered in below you and then also fall back down. I mean, this is a pretty big fall and it's rendering in a lot on the way. We've seen games like Scarlet and Violet, which are just poorly built and optimized, but struggle to even render in Pokemon a foot in front of your face. And yet Nintendo and Zelda have found a way to make this whole world livable and feasible in ways where you can interact with it in all these different ways. You can go into the sky, you can fall down. I What I'm most excited about is just how I'm going to interact with the game, how my brain is going to enjoy this experience. What am I going to create? How am I going to get around the world? How am I going to play Tears of the Kingdom? What did you think? That went so Some quickly. of Link's new abilities were updated from the previous game. Oh, better than I could have expected. They really, it, it doesn't feel like DLC so far to me. It's starting to really feel like, yeah, we're revisiting the same game or the same world. But honestly, this whole gameplay demo was set in places I don't recognize, places I'm not familiar with. I think for the most part, it was all set on like one sky island. There's probably multiple other sky islands. I mean, there definitely other multiple other sky islands you can go to. And all these new mechanics. Heck, you could just give me those in Breath of the Wild and I would start having fun again. But the fact that it's a whole new experience. They also didn't show any of the story. It's only gameplay. So there's still so many mysteries. As of yet, I don't know if we've seen the original abilities. I don't know if we've seen stasis we've seen this hand that can can uh, build things and join things also if i'm 
thinking about this logically now. So we have these creatures that have been assembled, these dormant creatures with this like gel, like sticking them together. And Link has this arm now, and clearly the arm has the ability to stick things together. You can see in the top left corner, he's using the arm right now as the ability, and he's moving things around and joining things. So whatever the arm is, is also the same entity that brought these, these creatures back to life. This calamity, this new calamity happens. Link and Zelda go to try and fight it. Link somehow gets stuck with the arm of whatever did all this in the first place, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know. It's all very interesting. You know, I was re-watching the Tears of the Kingdom trailer recently, and I always thought Zelda at the end of the trailer said, um, lend me your power when, when they're like falling together. But she actually says, please lend him your power. Please lend him your power. Which that's really, that, that is like, who, who? It, is Zelda asking Link to lend someone his power? Or is she asking someone to lend Link their power? And then that's the arm. But if that's the arm, the arm isn't evil, it's helping Link. So I don't know. I can go so many different ways with it. And this is why I love secrets and why I love uh, waiting until the game comes out. What? Let's go, my guy! Let's go! Oh! Oh! It's so pretty! It's so pretty! Oh! I've never seen it before! Yeah, I'm live on Twitch on YouTube, so you can ask me questions about this. Um, that's enough of me gushing about it. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to play it. Uh, if you're excited for it, let me know down below. Again, I'm live on Twitch playing through Breath of the Wild right now, and I have that unboxing of the Tears of the Kingdom Switch you can go and see before Nintendo takes it down, which might happen. I'm scared. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. It was a fantastic day for Zelda fans. It was a great day for me, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys tonight on Twitch. Oh, man, it looks so sick. Sorry if I missed anything, you know, I'm trying to, I try, I'm trying to do this quickly, but, uh, I, I mean, I've seen so much that I like, so, okay, bye.